Good morning. Guess where we're at? We're at Laodicea. They were lukewarm in their faith. Newly dug archaeologically right behind me. You can see how much they've done in a very short period of time. So let's go ahead and uh, learn something. Antiochus. Okay. The famous Antioch where the first time we pronounced the word Christians. It is the famous city, which was one of the largest cities of the of the empire, by the way. We're in Laodicea. We're walking on the ancient road of Laodicea. Here's another one. It's an amazing feeling, actually, to walk something that has as much history as this one does. Will you look at that? Look at that. <laughs> Amazing. That's awesome. I did the pause here. I mean, I just want to go over there. I'm sure we'll get there. What would it have looked like? Oh, it's a back in the day. What's on my left side? Left yeah. side uh, is uh, uh, <clears throat> this is used uh, 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 for uh, Sukkot. This is feast. What you see here, this is the Feast of Tabernacle. Mm -hmm. So you have the Shofar, which is the high holidays, mm -hmm. and then this is the the, the four species that you see them sometimes sh mm. shake it. It's like uh, I don't know how to say it in English. It's like four special species that represents the harvest. So this is Feast of Tabernacle. going into the church of Laodicea right through the doors near the main entrance and just like a synagogue it has three doors as you can see on the left side the wall the columns and in between we have this roof so here we are with a current excavation and reconstruction here a restoration of a Roman theater here in Laodicea. You can see the workers putting this theater back to its form of glory. Yeah. You normally see the sites after they've been, you know, prettied up. They actually get this one, they're putting it together. Wow. 24 churches here in this city. Next time you read the letter to Laodicea in Revelation. Now you'll have some images to put it together. I got our tour master here, Martin. So, Martin, we've been to Israel. 
How's Turkey lived up to the expectation? You know, it's exceeded my expectations. I, I clearly do not know how much history and how interconnected the Bible is with the, the basis of the seven cities, the New Testament, and the prophecies of the Old Testament. It's been truly insightful to see all the linkages between the whole Bible and you witness it firsthand here. Mm. Yeah, compared to Israel, yeah, is it the same? Is it different? Have you made that assessment yet? Well, you know, Israel is there's a contextual, there's a cultural context of a relatively new nation and a legendary people. This precedes it by thousands of years. So this is the predecessor of what Israel became. All right. So for all of the, you out there that think, oh, these are just, you know, the same relics, it's the same pillars because they're all Roman. No, you're wrong. Because when you put it in contextual, everything comes out from Israel as far as Christianity. And Rome and everybody else just came through it. But what's ne neat to see is that the Bible lasted all the way through. Yeah. And it's through, and you're here in Laodicea, and we saw the cross, graffiti crosses on columns, 24 churches, the city's massive, and a huge church that is patterned after a synagogue. So I, I mean, I think one of the biggest learnings for me is when you read Revelations and you see the letters to the churches, a lot of people today interpolate what you think it means, but they were clearly written for the people in each city, depending on the geography, the cultural context, and at a much more deeper meaning than what most of us uh, think we know about revelations. Those are the kind of things that you learn coming on a tour like this. Mm -hmm. When you actually see the place and understand why was it a letter written that way. When you come on a tour like this, and then you read the same passage over again, it does come to life and it gives you a whole new perspective on the scripture, don't you think? Absolutely. Right on. All right, next site. We'll see you in a little bit. We're here in Aphrodisia. I have my one of my travel buddies here. So what do you think about the trip so far, Naomi? The trip has been fabulous. Yes. Absolutely fabulous. And I have never been with a nicer group of people. And actually, the Bible experts that we're with, that I'm with, give me a whole new perspective. Thank you so much, Naomi. <laughs> Everybody benefits from trips like this. <laughs> Here we are at the gateway of Aphrodisias. We found out that the name of the city uh, was changed to Staropolis, uh, star being the sign of the cross because the city went from Roman mythology worship and emperor worship to Christian worship. And so they turned this temple of the goddess to a church. And it shows just the expansion of the Christian faith in ancient times. This would be your Olympic Stadium back then. How great is that? So, in honor of the athletes, what? Oh no!
I got killed. Pastor Matt's got long legs. And young lungs. I'm dying. And the temple of Aphrodite was converted into a church. In order to do that, change the name of a town and change a temple to the church, it indicates a high amount of Christian conversion in the area. So we're gonna enter the temple that was converted from the church side, so from the Christian side. Let's go ahead and go in and, and uh, catch up with the tour. just finished Heropolis and uh, you know it wasn't a biblical city but we learned a lot about what was going on at the time so you know Matt what did you think yeah I, I mean it wasn't a biblical city but you could definitely tell that there was a Christian presence uh, our tour guide he did show us a couple of places where you could see the inscriptions and the symbols and the crosses where it just kind of inscribed uh, somewhere uh, after 301 Christianity became a religion so uh, it was it was kind of intriguing to see that you know there is going to be a presence of Christianity as you kind of mm -hmm. go even to these other places which are incredibly Roman mm -hmm. and uh, still relevant today and just kind of shows how the the, the church community which you know, he also said is uh, it, it's not a building it's not always a building but it's a community of people mm -hmm. so it, um, it held way back then so right. that was pretty cool to see and the fact that they built the church in what used to be a pagan gods temple yeah it's pretty so, wild yeah. yeah now from an artistic standpoint since we know you're the art mind here of the couple <laughs> what did you think about the city about aphrodisias yeah oh yeah it was beautiful um i loved the way that it was a sculpture uh, school i guess so all of the ones that we saw in the museum were really really good um i love the details of all of the robes that were flowing those are my favorite things i took a lot of pictures of that that's um, awesome I don't know. And she did correct me. It was Aphrodisius. <laughs> <laughs> then it became Staropolis. And I'm turning the camera off. I'm done. <laughs> We're going to the hotel.